Hi, I'm Jim, and this tutorial series is for beginners to Unity and Blender. Rather than make a game like so many tutorials do, we're going to treat Unity like the awesome sandbox it is, because the best way to learn game development is to have fun playing with game development tools. OK, let's get started. So here we are in a completely empty Unity project. Let's start by making some 3D objects. So right click on the hierarchy window, select 3D object, and select cube. Now, if you click off the cube, you can deselect it. And if you click on the cube, you'll select it from this hierarchy window. Notice how the cube is at 0, 0, 0 in the world. Let's make another object. Click on an empty space in the hierarchy, right click, select 3D object, and select sphere. The sphere is also at 0, 0, 0 in the world space, which places it right inside the cube, which is fine for now. Right click again, and this time make a plane. Left click on the cube and drag up on the green arrow of the gizmo. And notice on the right hand side that the Y value is increasing. You can also click on that number and put in a value. So let's make it five. Let's change the position of the camera so that your game view looks a little like mine. Find the tab that says game and drag it to the right hand side of the scene view so you can see both at the same time. Select your main camera and type in the position 8, press tab to go to Y, 8, and then on Z, negative 8. On the rotation, make it 30 on the X, negative 45 on the Y, and 0 on the Z. Down by projection, click from perspective to orthographic. Our camera view is now isometric. This is a great view for this project. It's similar to a game like Monument Valley, but if you search Google for isometric art, you'll see lots of great examples. Click on the sphere, and in the top right corner, rename it to ball. We're going to make this ball instantiate from inside the cube. Left click on the ball and drag it into the project window. This creates a prefab. We're going to have many instances of this prefab in our scene. So it's useful to have a template of everything packed together. If we make a change to the template, it will apply to every instance of this game object. Now select the cube and right click and select Create Empty. An empty game object is just that. There are no components inside, though it does have a rotation and a position and a scale. Click on the cube and you can see the cube has a bunch of stuff a mesh renderer, a collider, a material. Let's rename this game object to ball maker and then click add component and type new script. Call your new script ball maker. I already have this script, so I'm just going to drag it onto the empty game object from the project window. To open your script, just double click on it where it says ball maker, it's grayed out, or you can double click on it from the project folder. I'm going to leave the script up and I want you to copy it. I'll have a link below if you'd like to be guided through this script to understand it a little bit better. Go back to Unity and the next step is to drag that ball prefab into the rigid body prefab spot. Okay, now press play at the top and let's see what happens. That was anticlimactic, nothing is happening. Let's check over to the console and see what's wrong. There you'll see a message that there is no rigid body attached to the ball clone. Well, we can fix that. Click on the ball prefab and then over in the inspector, click add component and type rigid body. The rigid body enables physics on our game object. Okay, let's try it again. Press play. Awesome. Now you should have a ball generating and there's no errors on our console. Click on the ball maker and let's check out some of the parameters that we have exposed in the ball maker script. One of the parameters is random torque. Let's make this zero and see what happens. Press play and as you can see, the balls stack and they aren't falling over until they get up to the cube. Adding a little randomness makes things seem more organic and lifelike. I would also encourage you to put higher numbers than I've put here or lower in the case of the make ball timer, experiment and see what happens. Rather than have the balls pop out of the side of the cube, I think it'd be cool if they fell out of the bottom. 
The ball maker is a child of the cube. That means its position is relative to the cube. If the position of the ball maker is 0, 0, 0, it's in the same spot as its parent object, the cube. If we drag it down on the gizmo, that offset is relative to the cube. Go ahead and go to the Y value and type negative 0.5. Press play, and you'll see that the ball is now coming out of the bottom of the cube. And let's go back to the ball maker and make that random torque 15 so the balls don't stack on top of each other. In addition to the directional tool, there's also a scale tool in the top left corner. And you can access these tools by pressing Q, W, E, or R on your keyboard. So let's pick the scale tool with R and squash the cube a little bit. Now go to the inspector and make that value 0.5 on the Y. Press play and let's see what happens. Now you can see that the ball below is being affected by that scaling we did on the parent object. Let's fix that with our child object. So since we scaled the cube by 0.5, let's double the Y scale on the child object. As you can see, that offset changes our spheres back to normal. In the next video, we're going to add color to our scene by creating a color palette. See you there.